What's up guys, it's your girl Haley Pro, aka The Sound Chick here. On today's interview, I am featuring Jason from Head Trip Trauma. For those who don't know, this band is a new metal band signed with Misanthropic Records. During this interview, fans can learn about the band's music, their history, their future projects that they're working on. This would include the album the band's about to release here shortly, as well as hear some great stories Jason tells. Keep on listening, this interview's definitely gonna be one you're gonna wanna listen to. Um, this is Jason Harris, a.k.a. J-Dog from Head Trip Trauma, and this is the Sound Chick. I'm just going to get into it here. You guys just released, you know, a track titled Head Trip. What were some of the comments you received on this track? Um, so far, it's been pretty good positive feedback. Um, you know, just another classic Head Trip track, uh, mainly just a, uh, it's a big fuck you to the credits. You know, you got yourself some haters out there, and that was just our way of saying, hey, fuck you. Right. So this track actually previews your upcoming full length album. What can fans expect from the rest of this, you know, album? I have to say this whole album is nonstop energy, uh, full of adrenaline. Um, get ready to groove it out because there's some sick grooves on there. And there's a lot of surprises, too. There's a lot of things that you wouldn't normally hear from us um, that's on there, a little mix. So I think that this uh, new album will live up to the name side effects for sure. That's awesome. You know, I did some research on your band, and the full-length album is supposed to be released, I think, here fairly shortly. Do you have a definitive date, though, for when it's going to be released? You know, I hate to be the Debbie Downer here, but unfortunately, the album is going to be postponed to spring 2021. Um, unfortunately, uh, with the whole COVID thing going on, um, production has been pushed back. Um, recording is almost complete. The album is literally one track from being finished. It's just, you know, mixing and mastering and, you know, proper marketing for the album. So it'll be early spring 2021. And no worries. We got some more surprises coming very soon to make it up to you. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's disappointing when bands have to, you know, postpone shows or, you know, uh, projects like that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's best to stay safe during this crazy, hectic time. So, I mean, it'll happen when it happens. Um, but, you know, we're excited and looking forward to it either way. So take me through some of the tracks that the band has released. What is one that you always recommend to people? Um, me personally, I would, I can't really say for the whole entire band. I know for me personally, I would say Glassjaw. And the reason why I say Glassjaw, Glassjaw was one of the very first songs we've written as a full band. Um, that track there, personally, I feel like if anyone brings up Head Trip, that's the first track you're going to know, you know, that or the Haymaker, you know, it's just, um, Glassjaw is very special and it pretty much shows like the definitive sound of Head Trip. So I definitely say Head Trip, um, Glassjaw for sure. Yeah, we'll go with Glassjaw. That or Animosity, I got to say, it's really hard to choose. Um, but if I feel like if the fans were to connect with it, probably Glassjaw. And why do you think fans would connect more to the band through that song in particular? Um, me personally, I feel like that was the first song where it was like, hey, what's up, fuckers? We're here. You know what I mean? It's kind of like uh, that song, just pure honesty, no bullshit with it. Um, and that's one thing about the band that will stand out, especially lyrically. Um, everything that we put out is from personal shit that we're going through or have been going through. And I feel like it's good for the fans to know that they're not along and they can make a connection with us because, you know, we're not in it for the money or the fame. We just want to get out there and fucking tear down the house and rock with every last one of them that come out to support us. You know, um, that's what this whole thing is even about. So the music and the lyrics mainly uh, for Glassjaw, I feel like people could relate to um, that song in itself is about uh, basically fighting your inner demons, not allowing that voice in your head to overcome and take control of your mentality, how you view and live your life. You know, it's basically a, you know, you could get through this. This is only temporary type deal. For sure. So looking at, you know, the band songs and the lyrics, do you think that it's easier for you guys to cover, you know, uh, darker or more personal themes having the stage presence that you guys have? Most definitely. Um, you know, that's the beauty of it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, dark to be good. But with us, it's like, you know, this for a lot of us in this band, this is just kind of our own therapy, you know, like, and then, you know, it's fucking awesome to know that people can make a connection to it and it helped them through some dark times. If that's the case, then we're doing our job, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I get that completely. You know, music is very powerful. 
And while I might agree that, you know, it doesn't have to be dark or, uh, I guess, doom and gloom to be good, it helps because, you know, it reaches that particular uh, group of, of listeners there. But yeah, I mean, it. I think it's awesome when bands cover more personal topics in their music. It's so relatable and uh, authentic. At the same time, I, I love it. Um, take me through some of the band's history. Um, when did you guys form? Sure. So it's crazy. This actually started originally as a solo project when I was in high school. Um, this was my senior year of high school back in 2014. Um, I had just gotten done leaving the, you know, the band prior called Infection at the time, and I ended up changing the name to Head Trip Trauma. And, and I wrote a couple of riffs or whatnot, and I was like, man, I would be really killer if I can actually get a solid lineup together to write these songs fully. So um, eventually, I got with our former drummer Jake Dewey, and we started writing music together. And you know, we start recruiting members, and pretty much the rest is history. Um, unfortunately, you know, we've been through a little bit of a lineup change over the past couple of years, but I feel like this lineup is very strong everybody's heads in it to win it and like i said we do it for the love of the mu you know, music in itself it's not really about the money so you know just to be able to have four people come together with the same mentality and wanting to live the dream and actually put everything they got into it is something special and i think that's what's best about us and what's pure is that there is no bullshit with head trip head trip is 100 percent honest and real and we're just thankful to, to have the fan base we have so pretty much head trip was created um through the solo project so into what it is now so that, that's pretty much the history on head trip that's really interesting i i love that it turned into um what it turned into you know that's really interesting so i heard you say that you went through a name change here how you you know changed the uh project name to head trip trauma what was your decision making in choosing this particular name well, um, in my opinion, Infection was probably one of the most shittiest names that I could have, you know, came up with in my first band. And I just, I felt like it needed something more original, you know. And, you know, I was just thinking about what the fuck am I going through, you know. You know, I'm, I fight myself all the time. That's the whole reason why I even started writing music. Um, and I was like, you know, what is the shit that I deal with most of the time is trauma, you know, past trauma and shit. And I was just like, you know, I was writing some lyrics and, you know, I was thinking about what what would work with trauma, you know. And I'm just like, well, my whole life's like a head trip. So what about a head trip trauma? And the rest really is history. I just, uh, I don't know, I was just sitting down late at night trying to doodling around and just came up with the idea. I mean, I, I like it. It seems, you know, it adds to that uh, that authentic and personal appeal to it all. So I think that it, it really does work for your band and, and the music that you guys make together. Um, take me through some of the influences you guys have in your music. What what bands would you say have the most influence over Head Trip Trauma's style and sound? That's a good question. Um, now, this answer here will pertain with every member. Um, like Z, phenomenal drummer, um, brother for sure. The influence with the drums with Head Trip is mainly like Lamb of Godish, and he, he nails that, man. He's, he's one of those guys that's just, he can do anything. He can do straight rhythm, you know, blast beats, whatever the case may be, double bass. And um, I definitely think Lamb of God is definitely a huge influence on us. Um, with, you know, Sledge, a.k.a. Zeb on bass, you know, his influence that goes towards the band would probably be like Rage Against the Machine, um, Limp Biscuit, you know, shit like that. And then, you know, we got Slipknot, Korn, um, Dry Kill Logic, 40 Below Summer. You know, a lot of the early new metal bands that really took the scene back in the, the day, I guess the, the connection there, just the influences for this band comes from that time period with a little bit of current stuff like Cane Hill, um, Weeping Wound, Prison, um, Wage War, you know, Fit for a King, guys like that mixed with that old school sound is kind of what influenced Head Trip to be the core of what it is. That's awesome. So moving on to some exciting news or a topic, uh, you know, Head Trip Trauma is signed with Misanthropic Records, um, which is great. I know for some bands, it's like finally being a part of a home or like a quote unquote safe place. Uh, what's it like being a part of this label? So far, so good. I, I have no complaints. I mean, ever since even before we even got signed, they've been treating us like family. You know, the CEO, Eric, swell guy, you know, he reached out to us. Um, a friend of ours named Chris through Angels and Demons, which is also on the label, had sent a demo to Eric from uh, Misanthropic, and then he ended up uh, message, messaging us, and we couldn't resist it. I mean, eat, sleep, breathe, metal, you know, what they represent, you know, letting the artists, you know, hold all the rights to their own music, you know, where there's them not trying to control what you write, you know, not trying to steal from you. They want to actually help and promote you, and it's rare these days to find an actual 
label that wants to support their artists to the point to where if they don't make a profit, they're still happy that the band succeeded because they, they basically paved that way. And that's the beauty about this label. This label, they honestly, like, all bullshit aside, this is the only label that I know that isn't trying to spare every band and squeeze as much money out of them as they can. They truly, genuinely care about their artists, and I'm proud to be on this label. And my brothers feel the same way, you know. Like you said earlier, this is really a home, though, for us, you know. And we, I think we've been struggling to find that home, you know. We, we sent our demo out to a couple places. We talked to a couple people, but we just couldn't find that deal that made sense and, you know, that was right for not only us as a musician, but, you know, for our daily lives as well. Because you got to think, you know, being on the road and being with a label, you know, you're going to be busy all the time. So, like, if you're not really living your dream to the fullest and have someone to back you and you just have someone taken and taken from you, how are you ever going to be successful? So, I love Misanthropic. These guys, they're the real deal, and I would highly recommend anyone looking for a label, check these guys out. Yeah, I mean, this, I've only been working with Misanthropic Records for a short amount of time here, but I mean, since I've been working with these guys, they've, it's really like family. And, you know, I've only really spoken to a few of the bands or like Eric. And I mean, it's all warm hugs all around. I've not had a bad experience yet. It's really, honestly, a refreshing experience. But you said that Eric, um, and I think Chris from Angels and Demons reached out to you or you sent them a demo. What was it like having, you know, read emails or messages from them wanting to hear more about your music? Well, what happened was Chris from Angels and Demons, he actually uh, messaged me, was like, dude, Head Trip's not on a label? I'm like, nah, bro, we just, we're just, we're, we're independent artists. And he was like, what? And he was like, send me your demo, send me your EPK. And I was like, okay. And I sent it to him. And the next thing I know, I get a message from Eric. He's like, hey, so uh, we're interested. Would you like to talk? And I was like, hell yeah, I'd like to talk. And, you know, instantly, <laughs> not even five minutes after I got the message, I called him. So that story, that's pretty much how that happened. Um, Honestly, just ecstatic. We all were. I mean, everyone in the band was just pumped, you know, just to finally see someone interested in what we're doing, you know. So because you got to think uh, – it, it's, it's hard out here being a new metal band, you know what I'm saying? New metal gets a lot of shit, unfortunately. And I think that's just because, you know, it's a big deal, you know, like kind of like big bands on big labels and stuff. You know, people t typically hate on stuff like that, and that's cool. You know, it's not for everybody, but, you know, we were just happy just to be accepted for us and want it for us and not want to be changed because they hear a certain sound like other labels do. Right. I mean, I can about imagine what, what it's like for a band, you know, to present their work and then have a label be like, oh, no, we really want you to change X, Y, and Z. And, you know, it takes it being a band's a lot of work and not many people really understand that. Because, you know, they're not in it themselves. But working with musicians all the time, it's like you really do realize how much work these bands put into their music. So finding a label or um, a promotion agency that, that doesn't want to take that away from you, that's pretty good. You definitely want to be with a label that's going to respect you and your music and what you've already built so far, you know. So, I mean, you know, it's it's a good starting place. For, for bands, for sure. So I know the label, and I'm sure you guys are all itching to get out and, and tour and stuff, and I know the label's been working with uh, a lot of their bands to put on these shows and tours. Are you guys getting excited to play again? Oh, yeah. That, I'm honestly like, it sucks not being able to play right now. And I really feel like my a lot of us, especially as musicians, I feel like a lot of our mental health gets kind of affected by that because we kind of depend on that, that live stage feel because there's just no better high than being on stage. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what nobody says. Like, there's nothing like being on stage, doing your thing, and people are screaming to support. And you're like, it's the best feeling. So when you're not able to get on stage and let out some of that aggression or that emotion that you've had caked up for so long, you know, it just starts to bum you out. So, yeah, definitely all of us are ready to get back on the road and just get back out there and make some new fans. Um, if you could open up for any band, which band would it be? Corn, All day, every day. It would be a dream come true to open up for those guys. Right, that would be so exciting for a head trip to open up for them, for sure. Yeah, I definitely think you guys can do it. And it'll happen. I pray so. <laughs> I pray so. That'd be great. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right. So what is the craziest thing you've done for music? You know, I had a hard time thinking about this question because I was like, you know, what, what is something crazy that I've actually done? You know, because I mean, I'm going ape shit every time we play. All of us are going ape shit, the entire band. 
So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back to 2018. Uh, we played a metal festival, I want to say, in South Carolina. And uh, we had a former bass player at the time. Um, he was playing, and he fell off the stage. And I didn't know. I looked over. I was like, where the fuck's the bass player? And we, we didn't know until the footage reached online. But he literally fell off the stage. And uh, he kept playing. He didn't miss a note at all. Like, he kept playing. He played it off smoothly. But he literally fell off the stage. So... I think that's pretty much the most craziest thing that's happening, to be quite honest. I mean, looking up, you know, you're going ape shit, and you look up, and you're like, uh, where the hell is my bass player? And then you look on the ground, oh, shit, he's on the ground, <laughs> you know? So, you know, that was pretty much the most craziest thing that's happened with that trip. That is pretty insane. Um, I can't believe that he continued to play. Um, yeah, he, he, uh, he took that fall pretty well and took it like a champ kept on playing. That's good, though. I mean, it, it definitely makes for a good story. That's awesome, though. Uh, so I have one last question for you, and that is, given the fact that you've been in a band and now working with Head Trip Trauma, uh, what's some advice you would pass down to upcoming artists? Stay focused. You know, work on your craft. Um, don't focus about how everyone else sounds. Do what inspires you. Um, and also don't compare your, your success to other bands. Um, focus on you and yourself individually, along with your bandmates. Hustle. Um, the dream doesn't work unless you work for it. Um, the sky is the limit. And make it your bitch. And I promise you, you will be successful. And educate yourself. We have technology. You don't know something. Look it up online. Educate yourself. The more educated you are, the more successful you'll be. What's up? It's the sound chick here again. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Jason from Head Trip Trauma. In the meantime, definitely make sure to go check out this band's music and be on the lookout for their new work being released soon. This band is definitely worth a listen and worth your time. Thanks for tuning into this interview and I look forward to having you on the next one. If you're interested in reading up more of my interviews or music reviews that I do, follow me on my social media on Twitter or Instagram at Real Sound Chick. This is a great place to see all of my updates, so definitely check it out there. In the meantime, rock on my dudes.